Mortimer L. Schiff was born June 5, 1877. He was the son of a German-Jewish-American banker and philanthropist, Jacob Schiff, and his wife, Teresa. Schiff attended Amherst University but never graduated, instead deciding during his sophomore year that he did not want to be just a rich man's son. So he left college and got a job in a railroad office. Years later, after he had become a partner of Kuhn, Loeb & Company, a world-renowned international finance company founded by his family, Amherst gave him a Master's of Arts degree as he had shown himself to be a true master of finance. We'll learn more about Mortimer Schiff and the scout reservation named after him in this edition of Artifact of the Week. Mortimer Schiff's father Jacob was born into the banking business in Germany with his family having connections to the Rothschilds. Jacob immigrated to the United States following the American Civil War in August of 1865. In November of 1866, he was licensed as a broker and in 1867 joined the firm of Bud Schiff & Company. In September 1870, he became a naturalized citizen of the United States. Bud Schiff & Company went out of business in 1872 and Jacob returned to Germany where he became the manager of the Hamburg branch of a large bank. In 1874, Abraham Kuhn, of the banking firm in the U.S., Kuhn Loeb & Company, invited him to return to New York and join their company. He accepted the offer in January of 1875 and, using his European connections, helped grow Kuhn Loeb & Company into the second largest banking firm in the world. On May 6, 1875, he married Teresa Loeb, daughter of Solomon Loeb, one of the founders of the company. Jacob and Teresa had two children, a daughter Frida and a son Mortimer. Mortimer entered Amherst College in the class of 1896, and though he did not graduate from the school, he was likely the first Jewish student to ever attend Amherst. Following his time at Amherst, Mortimer studied railroads in the U.S. and banking in Europe. On January 1, 1900, Mortimer became a partner in the financial firm of Kuhn, Loeb & Company, where his father was also a partner. On April 30, 1901, Mortimer married Adele. They had two children a daughter, Dorothy, who went on to own and publish the New York Post for more than 40 years, and a son, John, who shared his father's passion for scouting. In addition to being a successful financier, Mortimer was also a book and fine art collector and philanthropist. His collections were auctioned off in the summer of 1938 by Christie's Auction House in London. From 1900 until his death in 1931, Mortimer devoted much of his time to the development of scouting around the world. He was a member of the World Scouting Committee of the World Organization of the Scout Movement from 1901 to 1910, when he became a founding member of the National Executive Board of the Boy Scouts of America and served as Vice President of the Board from 1910 until May of 1931. In addition to being the BSA's Vice President, he also served as an International Scout Commissioner and in 1926 was among the first to receive the Silver Buffalo, which he reportedly wore any time he was in his scout uniform. Among his numerous gifts to scouting was $50,000, which he gave directly to Baden Pole at the World Jamboree in 1924 for the extension of the Wasm's international work. On May 18, 1931, at the BSA National Meeting in Memphis, Tennessee, Mortimer was unanimously elected president of the executive board of the BSA. Unfortunately, less than a month later, Mortimer died unexpectedly at his home on June 4, 1931, the day before his 54th birthday. Time magazine covered his death by saying, As it must to all men, death came last week to Mortimer Leo Schiff, one of the senior partners of Kuhn, Loeb & Company, recently elected president of the Boy Scouts of America, which he helped found and of which he is the American-famed Silver Buffalo. Had Mr. Schiff lived another day, he would have been 54. He was in good health and spirits on the last day of his life. He attended a luncheon given by Percy Hampton Johnston, president of Chemical Bank and Trust Company, in honor of the U.S. Ambassador to Germany. There he chatted with his friend, Thomas William Lament, of the rival House of Morgan, and a collection of bank presidents. Having lunched well, he remarked that it was a fine day for golf, and he went to Piping Rock Club, which he helped to found years ago on Long Island's smart North Shore. There he played against his daughter, Mrs. Richard Brown West Hall, whose husband, a member of Winthrop Mitchell & Company, was at his office. Then he went to his Oyster Bay home. Jovial, hungry, he descended the stairs two at a time when dinner was announced. 
At the table were his daughter and his son, John M. Schiff, graduate of Yale in 1925. After dinner, he chatted quietly with his son, who since January 1 has also been a partner in Kuhn Loeb. About 10.30, he went to his bedroom, put his knife, wallet, loose change, and other knickknacks on the dresser, and went to bed. About 4 a.m., he awakened and felt a strange sensation near his heart. He arose, put on a silk dressing gown, wrapped himself in a blanket, and sat by the window. It was in this position that he was found by his valet, who entered the room to awaken him at 7 o'clock. Mortimer also served his fellow man outside of scouting. He served as president of the Jewish Board of Guardians, honorary vice president of the Jewish Social Service Association, and was the second largest contributor to the Federation for the Support of Jewish Philanthropic Societies. In 1923, he gave $50,000 to help purchase the famed Adler Library for the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. He was one of the Committee of Eleven to coordinate Army service agencies during World War I, and he worked with the YMCA in France. He was also an officer in the Intelligence Division of the Army Reserves. He appeared on the cover of Time magazine on February 14, 1927. For most scouts and scouters, Schiff's name is most recognized by the Schiff Scout Reservation in Mendenhall, New Jersey. The original reservation comprised 483 acres and was purchased for the BSA by his mother in memory of her son. It was formally dedicated on October 18, 1933. In the collection, we have a copy of the proceedings from that day. New Jersey Governor A. Harry Moore said, There are innumerable memorials throughout the world, costly, stately, magnificent, conceived by artistic minds and fashioned by the cunning hands of master workmen. But what grander, what more glorious memorial could any man have than this, the handiwork of the eternal and omnipotent God? New Jersey is glad that you are here, glad that her people may have the inspiration of this memorial, glad that it may officially inscribe the name of Mortimer Earl Schiff upon its golden roll of honor. The state that has been honored by many great men, no greater, I assure you, than this man, who has done so much for the youth of America. The record of that day includes letters from President Franklin Roosevelt, Governor Lehman of New York, and Baden Pohl. It also includes letters from many scouters around the world with their regrets about being unable to attend the opening. Schiff Scout Reservation was in operation from 1932 to 1979 and served as the BSA's National Training Center. Schiff hosted the first wood badge course held in the United States and served as host to a special troop with William Greenbar Bill Hillcourt serving as Scoutmaster. This troop was used as a proving ground for Hillcourt's ideas and was commonly used for photographs in Boys Life magazine and in the 1948 field book. It also hosted Explorer Post 604, an all Eagle Scout post dedicated to providing service for scouting events. When the National Council moved its headquarters to Irving, Texas in 1979, the National Training Center was moved to the Philmont Training Center here in New Mexico. Today, over 310 acres of the original donation are preserved as the Schiff Nature Preserve. When the Mortimer L. Schiff Scout Reservation was closed, Camp Wawapex in Wading River, New York was renamed the John M. Schiff Scout Reservation in honor of Mortimer's son, John. John Schiff was also honored with the Silver Buffalo and served as National President of the Boy Scouts of America from 1951 to 1956. Like his father, he served on the World Scout Committee of the World Organization of the Scout Movement from 1955 until 1961, and was awarded the Bronze Wolf by the World Organization of the Scout Movement for exceptional services to world scouting. That's all the time we have for this week. Join us next time as we continue to learn more about the history of the Boy Scouts of America through the collection of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week.